Fortune for the Bird Rock. Thank you very much. So, funny story, I went out to the car to get the CDs and noticed that I grabbed the wrong bag, but I do have a pair of women's shoes. And my wife's, so I don't know. I'm just, really, I'm just really glad that she doesn't have a gig tonight. <laughs> But, so, but we do have a few. Ross has, yeah. No, no, Jen needs those. Anyway, we do have a few CDs of both titles there, so you can see Ross. Three and three. So you have to fight over it, but the lucky three, it's going to be a bidding war. Anyway, we're going to start off the second half, quick second half here, with the Seamus and his couple of tunes, The Morning Thrush and Jenny's Well with Charlie. Turn her up there, Ross.
You know, it's funny they say about that tune, that Jenny's Welcome, his version, that he played, it was the way he played it when he was drunk one night. He was a total screw up, but he insists, no, it was not a total screw up. He meant to play it that way. And I always thought it was a shame for him because that meant he had to play it the same way there every time after that. It was very difficult. Unless you're drunk. <laughs> The next number we're going to do here is a traditional set. Actually, uh, <laughs> that's no cheeks. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to do a traditional set from Kate Brighton. I always like to do at least one of those in there. And uh, I'm going to play, play a set of jigs by the late great Dan R. McDonald, Dan Rory McDonald. Uh, he was a he was a cousin of John Allen Cameron's. He was quite a quite a uh, interesting dude. I never met him, of course. He died in the seventies or whatever, and uh, he was a great composer of tunes. They say he composed thousands of tunes, and they make up a huge part of the repertoire in Cape Breton. But they say he was autistic or something because he couldn't really look at people while he was talking to them. He would be closing his eyes and talking like this, and he had very strange accents, you know, and very strange pronunciation stuff like that. So they figure now that he must have been autistic or something, because he could barely function as an adult as well. And uh, But anyway, uh, the funniest story, one of the funniest stories I find about him is that he used to work in the GM plant in Windsor, and go there and work for months and then come back home with the money type of thing. And they lived in boarding houses in Windsor at the time. This would have been in the, in the 40s and 50s. And uh, so Dan R was out with the boys playing tunes. He was always the one playing the fiddle for all the guys when they'd be having a few jars or whatever. And he was having a few jars as well, and, and somehow they ended up at a strip club. But it wasn't a strip club, it was actually a whorehouse. <laughs> and so Dan R doesn't care, he's just playing away, having a great time, he's not really paying attention to that aspect of things. And the place gets raided by the cops, right? And everybody splits out the windows and the doors and the back entrance, everybody's gone. Except, of course, Dan R. He's still sitting there playing the fiddle. They take him downtown, and the first thing he says was, is, well, I, I was not alone. There were others, too. And then he wrote the list of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, we'll do this little set of jigs in honor of Dan Arnold.
You're not Brian, so that's how you want to end that one. Good, man. I'll catch that next time. <laughs> Okay, so now, uh, I, uh, you know, in case you're starting to get a little drowsy, we're going to get the Hilo Pipes out again. Yeah. So brace yourself. <laughs> we're going to do a, a, an air called La Cabra No More, and then we're going to go into uh, some reels after that. And, uh, so this is a new one for us. You were wondering there, Ross. And, and you, Brian. He <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's joking around because these uh, the Highland pipes were very limited, have a very limited range, so they're based in the, on the Kiwi. <laughs> in fact, do you think they were uh, invented in Canada, eh? <laughs> You never give me a chance. I think uh, that's like some water cooler shit, isn't it? <laughs> He's kind of like Dilbert. Dilbert stuff. Cook out at the water cooler there, Ross.
number for you. And again, I want to say, first of all, let's have a big round of applause again for the new Burdock Music Hall. I think I'm going to spend a lot of my future here. Anyway, uh, and uh, we want to thank all you guys for coming tonight. It's so great to so many, see so many people here. And I hope to see lots more people at the, at the last Wednesday of this month at Dara Keos for our big session. We'll have a great crack. And also, next Saturday, we're playing down at the local. And, and me and Bro Brian are both pretty sure that we asked Shane Mulcrone to join us. I, I'm pretty sure he's coming. So anyway, he's thinking about us. <laughs> so uh, Shane Mulcrone from all the way from County Mayo is going to join us. And so we'll have double banjos that night. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, Brian brings his. And we're going to end off tonight with uh, Mr. Brian playing the hubcap again, doing a little bluegrass music, and then I think we'll do we'll go Scottish on you. Thanks again, everybody, for coming. Brian Tahani and all the part of this Last Griffiths on all the corners.
Uh, you're welcome.